Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to attempt to create a song using randomly generated melody notes. It might turn out amazing, it might be a total train wreck, more likely though it'll end up somewhere in between. Now before we get into it, you may be wondering why I'm wearing a shirt with a picture of myself on it. To announce my new spring merch line, I did a photo shoot recreating those old school photos we all hated as kids and posted it on Instagram. Some of you asked for that picture to be put on a shirt and being the eternal people pleaser that I am, I listened. You can get a shirt like the one I'm wearing over at www.shopsamuraiguitarist.com. More realistically, you can also get a shirt like the one I'm wearing on my shirt over there as well. And if you've got any other recommendations for things you'd like to see on my merch line, let me know. I've started up a requested by you collection. Anyways, on to the music. The foundation for almost all the music we hear is the major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. There are seven different notes here. It repeats at the eighth. So what I'm gonna do to create my melody is use a number generator to randomly pick a number between one and seven. Each one of these numbers will correspond with one of the different scale degrees. If it picks, say, three, I'll use the third scale degree, which is do, re, mi. I'll do this, I don't know, 19 times, giving me 19 notes. From there, I'll add some rhythm to the notes, match them up with some chords, and see if I can build a track. Let's get those numbers. I'm gonna use random.org. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, first we have five, feeling alive. Now we have three, sounds good to me. Then we have six, pick up sticks. Okay, that's getting annoying. Five, two, seven, two, one, six, seven, six, six, ooh, doubles. Seven, five, three, six, three, one, Five. And those are the winning lotto numbers. I'm gonna use the key of C because it has no sharps or flats, making it nice and easy, which I'm all about. So the first number that we generated was five. The fifth note of the C major scale is G. G will be the first note in my melody. The next number is three. The third scale degree of C major is E, so E will be my next note. Here's how it sounds if I play all the notes one after another. At this point, it sounds like exactly what it is, a bunch of random notes. Can this be turned into music? We'll soon find out. Next, I'm gonna arrange these notes into two melodic ideas by adding some rhythm. I'm gonna allow myself to jump up or down an octave if necessary to open up some possibilities. I'm also gonna time lapse this next bit because trust me, it's not gonna be interesting. And fast forward. All right, that was definitely not the easiest thing I've ever done, but I have come up with something. Like I said, I'm gonna break this down into two melodic ideas. The first one, using the first 10 notes, sounds like this. And the second, using the next nine notes, sounds like this. Now we're getting something that sounds musical, I can work with this. The next step is to add harmony or chords to the melody. Using each note in the C major scale, I can build a chord. So in this key, I have these chords available to me. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, a B diminished triad, and then we're back again with a C major. There's by no means a hard and fast rule that says you can only draw your chords and melodies from one key when you're composing a song, but for the sake of this experiment, it'll make it significantly easier. Without diving too deep into the theory behind this stuff, I know that certain notes will sound nice with certain chords. For example, my first two notes will work well with a C major. My next couple notes will work with an E minor. There are usually only a handful of options that will make sense with each spot. With some trial and error, I can come up with a chord progression. If you are interested in diving deeper into music theory, I'm gonna give you a little teaser. You can expect a complete comprehensive resource coming from me on that very subject real soon. Stay tuned. Here are the chord progressions I came up with for the two melodies. I'll play them together for you. At 
this point, we're beginning to get something that sounds like actual music. You may be wondering though, how am I gonna turn these two short ideas into a full composition? Well, let me tell you, my friend. I'll start out the song with an intro and then play the first melody exactly as it's written so the listeners can get it into their ears. Then I'll play the same melody again with some slight embellishments. After hearing something once, an audience has a familiarity with it. If I played the exact same thing again, it might sound a little too repetitive, but at this point, if I changed it too much, it would sound too out there. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the second melody, play it twice, and on the second time, I'll add some slight alterations. At this point, I'll go back to the first melody, but take it even further out. The audience has already heard it twice, so I can take some more liberties here. And on the fourth time through, I might really stretch it out. Then back to the second idea again to finish things off. Since this is the end of the song, I'll probably keep it somewhat close to the original. It's nice to end on something familiar. The whole idea here is to get as much as I can out of these two ideas. I've drawn eight pieces out of two. This is much easier than trying to come up with eight individual ideas. As far as the production goes, at first I was going in the bluegrassy direction, but now I'm thinking it's gonna be a stripped down, dark, slow, moody type thing. It'll take me a bit to get this together. Coming up next is whatever I come up with. Wish me luck. Here are a couple thoughts about this. It's not my favorite thing I've ever played, but I definitely don't hate the end result. From the rhythm to the production to the chords, I tried my best to let the melody lead me to the answers. It was a fun exercise, and the end result was definitely not something I normally would have come up with. If you're in a musical rut and can't get yourself going in any sort of creative direction, this could work. It will probably be more of an exercise than a means to writing your magnum opus, but you never know. That about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, you can get a shirt like I'm wearing on the shirt that I'm currently wearing over www.shopsamuraiguitarist.com. I've got two designs up there besides this one. Lots of colors, lots of styles, all the sizes, and they ship around the world. Repping that Sammy G merch goes a long way in making what I do possible. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to see another video like this one, click that link up there. I've got tabs and early access available to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Until next time, thank you all for watching. I'm I'm Sam Ray Guitarist and I will see you again soon.